Is that working now? Amazing. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jesse. Brilliant. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Um, I just need to make you aware that we are currently recording this interview. Um, and we will get a media release form over to you so that you can sign off on agreeing to do this interview. Um, let me check no my check this. Uh, so. I just want to encourage you and say that um, there are no wrong answers to these questions. We are exploring here and opening up the conversation. So yeah, no, no wrong answers. Don't be afraid to say how you really feel. Um, is there anything else I need to let you know? Um, yes, we're in a space with back, minimal background noise. Great. Um, your lighting looks good. Okay. I, have a, I have a ring light if you need a minute, but I feel like it never makes the difference. It makes me look pale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so if you're ready, I'll start asking the questions now, that's okay. Brilliant. Thank Thank you. You. So first of all, a very easy one. Can you please state your name, where you're from and what you do for a living? My name is Meryl Evan. I am from Plano, Texas, and I am an accessibility marketing consultant and speaker. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I have just realized that I am supposed to pin you so that you can't see me. Is that, is that, is that okay for you if you can't see me? Is that going to work? Well, I should be able to see you because I can pin you, but look, give it a shot. Yeah, let me just say, so I need to. Pin? Am I yeah. pinned? Yeah, you are pinned, great. And you can still see me in the little one, so amazing. Brilliant. Uh, the next question, again, is a very easy one. Um, just some background info to get you comfortable. Where did you grow up? What did you have for di dinner last night? And what do you like to do for fun? I grew up in Fort Worth, Texas, which is an hour from where I am now. So I didn't move very far. But I did live in Washington, D.C. at one point. So I, I've been outside of Texas. And what did I have for dinner last night? I had some turkey slaw. And what do I like to do for fun? I like to travel. And we play games with my family whenever they agree to play games. Amazing. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to the um the real questions now. So um what is your vision for XR in the future? My vision for XR in the future is that it will be acceptable. We have a long way to go, and it's been disappointing that it hasn't been, the industry has not been more inclusive early in the game, but hopefully that will change soon and we'll see more progress. Yeah, I completely agree. Yes, I think it's a changing industry. Um, so if you feel comfortable doing so, can you describe your disability and how it might affect you day to day? So I was born profoundly deaf and I grew up learning how to speak in the breed. I do not use American Sign Language. I know there was a few signs, but I could not have a conversation. And so, the primary way I listen is through the breeding and with my cochlear implant. But I had a hearing aid for many years before I got the cochlear implant. So the so lip breeding helps me understand the cochlear implant, helps me distinguish 
a lot of the words that look the same. So, and captions are a big help as well. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, so, we're going to move on to the questions about XR now. So, what were your expectations before trying XR and did your, expect, did your first experience meet them? My expectation before trying XR is I thought I would not like it at all because I was because I was born deaf, I was also born with a vestibular disorder. What that means is that I can become prone to vertigo or dizziness easily. And I played them 3D games years ago and could not handle them because it was, it, I didn't feel good. So that's why I thought for the longest time I would never try XR. And your neck question, well, I can answer your neck question because it's part of that story. So I'll let you ask and then I'll answer. Yeah, what was it like trying uh, video games for the first time then? Not not fun, I imagine. Well, um, so I showed you try a thought because um, my friend and colleague Thomas Logan convinced me to try it because he wanted my feedback as someone who's deaf in my experience. So I try, I started with an application, an app that I knew had captions. And that was the Infrank house. What it is, it's a tour of the home where Anne Frank and her family and the other family lived to hide from the Nazis. And it was tiring because it's very move around a bit as you navigate the room. It was very cool, but it was very tiring. And it took me about three times to get through the whole place. And it was a nightmare, you know. But I discovered over time that I was able to stay in VR longer and longer and longer. I truly believe it's helping train my balance system and making it less sensitive to motion. I mean, it's not a cure, but it's stronger. It's like exercise, exercising, you, you lift weight, you get stronger. Um, and sometimes it's not feasible. So, that's what uh, XR thing for me. And I found some other app apps that were captioned. It's been a, the biggest struggle with XR is to find apps that I know are, are accessible to me because many apps will not necessarily have official captions, but they may have ongoing text for the area. So that's not a caption program. So Companies are not advertising that they have ongoing tests for our audio and dialogue spoken in the app. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, the next question is, why did you choose to try XR? Can I help with that? Sorry, what was that? I missed that. Yeah, you kind of just answered that, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so what kind of XR have you experienced? Have you tried augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality? I have tried all eight, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. I've mostly done virtual reality because I have a headset. And I've done a little bit of augmented reality on my phone using tools. For example, if you start through an animal with a certain app, you can put the animal in your room. It was really cool. But a really useful way is if you go shopping at a retail store, a big box store, and you want to buy a lamp. And you're like, you can't picture what the lamp look in this room with a bit. So you can put the lamp and use your phone camera to put the lamp in your room and see how big it is. I mean, it's, that's just amazing because I can tell you, I can measure things 
Yeah. I can look at the lamp dimension, say 20 inches tall. Do you put up a 20 inches of a ruler on my desk or whatever? It's just not the same. Augmented reality does a better job of showing me of how it really would look. And then mixed reality, I've done a teeny bit of it. So with an a VR environment where we will have an avatar in the environment. But above our avatar, we could have a camera that was showing up in real time. So you have an avatar and a camera, but that's what the most I've done on mixed reality. Yeah, I find uh, mixed reality a very interesting one. I've not tried that much of it myself, so I, I'm still not sure if I understand the difference between the VR, AR and MR, to be honest with you. And I've yeah, I've been trying to work in this field for quite a while. So I think knowing what things are can be a bit confusing. At least it is for me anyway. I don't know about everyone else. So there's just some background noise here. So I'll just wait till that goes away. Sunder, I'm in the interview, so. Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. The people uh, in the yeah. house, it's going to happen. It is the joys of uh, working from home, isn't it, really? Yeah. Great. Sure. Um, so, where were we? So, when you have tried these experiences, where have you tried them? Have they been at home? Have they been in the public space or work setting? Most experiences were... Most experiences were at home. Oh, I forgot when we were augmented reality that I tried in another location and would caption glasses. So uh, but it would caption when other people were speaking. It was a really neat experience. It was a, a little tiring on my eyes, but it was exciting. But anyway, so it's mostly been in my home office or my home and not too much outside of it. Yeah. How would you feel about trying something in the public space? Because I know I personally am a little bit put off by it because I don't really want other people watching me or something trying something <laughs> for the first time. Do you feel the same way about that? I haven't had an opportunity. I can't imagine when that could happen. I think the only way that might happen is if I'm with people and that's what we're there to talk about is XR. It would be for the purpose of XR. But I can imagine you going out and doing it for fun or for, by choice. Yeah, I'm with you. I would rather be at home and, and my probably my own home. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a bit weird to watch somebody who interacting with stuff that nobody can see. Yeah, I'm, I'm always concerned about people looking at me if I'm trying something new, for sure. Um, so when you've done XR experiences before, can you remember what the hardware setup was? So was there a headset? Was there a control there? So I have a headset, a Quest headset, Quest 2, with the they're standard controllers. I can use them. I don't have a problem with them. I've also used XR through the computer where I enter the environment through my monitor rather than through the headset. Yeah, that, uh, and I can use my keyboard and my mouse to navigate when I'm online through a computer. And you've mentioned as well the uh, glasses before, which is... A very interesting piece of hardware. Yeah, I've not heard of anyone using those before. So congratulations, I guess, for trying that. <laughs> um, right, thank you. Uh, so, so what was the purpose of the experience you tried? Were they for, like fun? Was it like documentary? Were you trying to learn something new? In my case, I'm usually an actor. For we purposes of doing research and writing articles about my experiences in XR, 
Now, but I have played a few times by Troy. The fan at one game of the music game, uh, Nice Saber, uh, Saber, Free Saber. And I also played a, an adventure game where you got the puzzle and that was a lot of fun and I got through the whole thing. And I was able to find out from the company that it had ongoing dialogue. We were, actually there was no spoken dialogue, everything was visual, which would be a problem for people with reading disability, obviously, because some of the fans were not the best fun. Let's see. Um, I have the challenge. Of, the biggest challenge for me is the fan app that I know will be accessible to me. I don't want to download an app and try it and then have to return it for a refund. It's just too much trouble, especially since there's so many. And I, it's really important that companies put in the information uh, because, again, it's not officially captioned in some scenarios. So they need to mention our dialogue is spoken and on screen. That way those who depend on listening to dialogue will know that other dialogue is spoken as well. Like that game I played that had no spoken dialogue. That would be an issue for somebody who depends on the sound. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so you've mentioned captions. Um, what are the accessibility features were there in place during your experiences? The biggest one, is obviously for me, is captions to uh, at least, uh, I don't know, audio, any dialogue, and a joke, uh, that be safer, there's no one. It's just music. Well, I mean, there's lyrics and song, but uh, that that's not the point of the game. I, I just, I'm just playing and enjoying the music. And sometimes I don't have my own plan on, so I don't hear anything at all. And not too many things. There are a few apps that have captions, and then there are also scenarios like I am the co organizer of a meetup about accessibility in VR, and we do walk around to get captions in those meetups. But that's a workaround. That's not part of the environment. And no app or software or de device should have to work around for caption. They should be built in to the environment. And I've been to a couple, and it was really a good start. It's still making progress, but there's still a bit of work to do. Do you, do you find that um, when something does have captions, are they sufficient for you? Are they, do you get everything you need from the captions or are they missing something sometimes? So I'm thinking of two examples where there were captions and one of them was an art space, but it's not a permanent feature. Yeah, it's not a permanent option yet. But I, I was in it several times when they did have it. And I did report there were some issues with the caption because they were bright with no background. And I constantly had to move my view to get the caption on a dark background so I could read them. So they really need to have a background to be more readable. The readability needs improvement. And then another one was spatial, which is a social VR environment for collaborating. And first of all, they chose for caption and accessibility should never cost anything. However, the company does have to pay for the captioning technology. So that's what they were passing on the cost to the customer. So hopefully they can find a solution so it's not a pay feature. Anyway, those captions were right with the very faint twin parent background, and they were very hard to read. Probably worse than the first one I described, and I had to find a dark background to make it more readable. So they willingly work in, in 
changing the background to be more opaque than transparent. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, so you just said how useful you found these features. Um, how long would, would you say it takes you to find the captions when you try new experience? If there are captions available, is it very obvious to you where you find that information or is it quite difficult to find? I usually look for the setting and that's where I find them. So I'm pretty much, no, I guess for my many, many years of watching caption on my TV and on streaming networks, so I kind of know where to find them typically. Great, thank you. Um, you mentioned some of the weaknesses of captions and the experiences you tried. Have there have, have there been any experiences where you thought, yes, the captions here are very strong? Right. Um, well, the captions are not strong enough. So, so, so it's a strain to see them. And oh, I forgot to mention on the spatial example, the problem with the captioning feature, let's say I am a paid customer and I pay to have captioning. The problem is it captioned me. It doesn't caption the other person. The other person has to pay for the caption to show up on there. So, don't know logic here. Why would I want caption for myself when I need someone else's caption? Yeah, that 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 makes no sense, really, <laughs> does it? That's not no, yeah, that's not very accessible at all. Um great. Thank you for those. I think I'm gonna move on to some questions about the future now and what you would love to see for the future in XR and the access. So um, what do you think could be done to improve the features that captions? You've already mentioned having a dark background. Is there anything else that you would like to see improved? Well, I'd like to see captions become a standard and more importantly, optimization, I'm sorry, option. So I have been working with a deaf, uh, a group of people who are deaf and hard of hearing. We all communicate differently. We all have different preferences. And really, there is no one preference that stands out from the rest. So that means we need to have a customization option for caption because everyone is different on the color choices, on the background transparency or no transparency, and also on the headlock or fix, meaning do some people prefer the caption to move with their head while others prefer to stay put. So that's my hope that we find a way to create captions for XR that can be customized just like closed caption off for online. And the other challenge with XR caption is you're in a 360 degree environment. So the different rules because a Mac a TV, you've got a, a set shape. Where in VR, it might be around you, but in some the scenario is like a TV. You can only see the mask because it will do the motion sickness to do that kind of thing for to having everything all around you. So, and of course, I would like everybody to be able to use XR regardless of their ability or disability. Yeah, that is the dream, really, isn't it? Um, great, thank you so much for that. Um, you've kind of already answered this, but if you had a magic wand, what would you change about XR and accessibility? If you could just solve all the problems like that, what would you do? Uh, and I would, I want caption everywhere, not just in apps, 
for example, both have, you can chat with other people and it was tedious. My colleague would have to type and it was very tedious because you're taking the control and basically like pulling, which is very tedious. So they need to have a feature with a speech to text that they can just say what they want to say in the end and will caption it for them rather than having to type it in. And so it's my hope that there will be automatic caption in our settings and then app will start to have proper caption. They will need automatic caption if, if it's interacting with the game. But if you're interacting with other people, you're gonna need automatic caption because you're gonna have too many people involved and nobody can caption everyone. So, and hopefully the automatic captions will get better and they will work with a variety of accents. I mean, y'all have probably noticed I have an accent and that King was being born deaf. So these speech text apps don't work very well with my accent. Yeah, it's a, I get that slightly because uh, I have a slight uh, speech issue as well. So speech to text for me, it really does not work very well and it's very, very annoying. Yeah. Uh, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, so how would you like to experience XR in the future? Are you, do you, do you want to continue to do it at home? Would you like to do it in public? Like, where, where, where does Excel work for you best for you in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, I like everybody to be able to go into it, and we can all interact, no matter what. So that's number one. And whether I would do it at home or out in public, I, I can't. I might be missing something here, but I can't see the need for a public because that's the whole point of extra. You can enter the world from wherever you are and meet other people there, wherever they are. So it's like a place where we can all meet and do whatever we're doing. And what I really like about the possibility of XR is that it's training, job training, medical training, helping patients because they, some patients, maybe they can't go anywhere. They can do it through the online world. And it's a safe way to do training. So military, police, they can interact with the world without putting anybody in danger. Same thing with the firefighters, they can do uh, interact with the world and no materials are wasted, you know, uh, because the way firefighters do their training is they have a control bond of, of a real scenario where you're wasting material. I mean, it's for training purposes, but XR will reduce that. And, and I would hope that working from home become more and more of a thing with XR coming into the picture. And that would be really good for the environment as we get close vehicles and buses off the road. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. And I think I just have one last question. And again, you've kind of spoken about this, but what do you see as the ultimate potential for XR in the future? The biggest thing is, is a safe way to train people. You're not putting anybody's lives at risk. I mean, especially in the healthcare field. So, and I think mixed reality does that really well. Oh, I thought of a way that you may have to do this in a public setting, and that's for job training. So, you may have, if you're in healthcare becoming a doctor, you'll probably have to be in the operating room with the equipment so you can interact with the equipment 
But what you see inside is a patient and you're practicing with the actual equipment. So it's mixed reality, really, because they're getting to feel that equipment and figure out how to use it. Same thing with construction and manufacturing. They need to be at the equipment and interact with them while inside they will have whatever they're working on without putting anything at risk. And the other advantage is someone who's training them can see what they see and get them feedback on how to do it better. So there's so many possibilities and not some of them. And I've also heard about a thought being used to help patients with mental health issues. And so I don't know a whole lot about that, but I like that possibility because we have a, a crisis, a mental health crisis going on, and hopefully it will help with that. Yeah, hopefully. We can we can just hope for the best for the future, I think. Um, so that's the end of my questions. Is there anything you want to add at all? Mm. The biggest one is just think inclusively, build all actor should be built adaptably from the start. It needs to be happening now because when you build it after the fact, so it becomes a complicated solution that's not easy to do because programming is complicated and you can't just simply tap on caption. You have to weave it into the code somehow. And sometimes it's not an elegant solution. So it's better to do it from the start. Yeah, I could not agree more with you there. Um, I think that's the end of the interview. Um, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.